Hello everyone. Today's verse of the day is 1 Peter 4.14. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because of the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. Whoever holds tight to their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life for Christ's sake shall find it. In times of life, you get buried. You get buried to hush you up, to shut you down for the name of the Lord. But still again, you rise. At times, they want to silence you. You are too much for what is going on. And I say that because I think about school. I'm excited. I've been happy all of a sudden because I know I'm about to go back to school and, and learn, but I actually took about four years off. I took four years off because I was making straight A's. I hit biology class, who the teacher was pretty much preaching evolution. And in that class, I showed through the scientific method how evolution was against the laws of physics and that in fact was a faith. And oh boy, did that stir up the students. Did that stir up the teacher? It really was a wrench in their things. And no, they, they couldn't put up any good arguments. But what ended up happening? What from went from a straight A student became a B student in biology. I got a B for biology. And then I took another class, information system management. And what ended up happening was the professor of that class happened to be the husband of the biology <laughs> professor's class. And they knew about what I did. They weren't happy about it. So this man was trying to sink every single paper that I wrote and tried to crush it. And I, I took it up and no, I had to drop that class because I saw what they were doing. From a straight A student to a B, and all of a sudden now they're trying to flunk me. So it's been about four or five years. The Lord allowed me to do something great and change some minds and things, but then he buried me for a future time. He covered me up for a future time to go back to school, and I'm so happy I get to go back and learn again and right and all these things so i really think about that if you are insulted for the name of christ you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of god rests upon you i was happy that he allowed me to have an impact on somebody's life in there and i am happy to any time team take what seems like an l for the lord so that i rise with him as well so you want to read one of the things I wrote from school a few years back? Okay. Now, mind you, this is after the teacher, the professor was preaching evolution as though it was not a theory, not a belief, but a fact. So I said the scientific method tutorial happened to be down when I attempted to look at it. But what I look like about the scientific method is how things should be observable, testable, repeatable, and unfalsifiable. I do fear that certain things that have been derived as fact from the general science community are off-based as they are against the laws of physics and have a bit of unquantitative data poured into them. Carbon dating is to be considered a great way to age things yet has been shown to be quite inaccurate at times. Living penguins carbon dated 8,000 years old. Freshly killed seals carbon dated 1,400 years. And New York Times saying its limitations can only go back 30,000 years. The problem is we cannot witness what happened billions of years ago, so we rely on faith that our current equipment should do the trick without ever knowing. 
Another thing is the Big Bang Theory, which incorporates cosmic evolution, chemical evolution, stellar evolution, abiogenesis, layman's terms, organic evolution, macroevolution, and microevolution. The first five definitions of evolution cannot be observed that is in the time it would take to occur. Microevolution is observable and simply a variable within a kind of life form. So based on the outlook of the environment and dead fossils, they conclude a record that cannot show that each fossil came from one another. I've read of 277 cultures and places around the world documenting the global flood. Could that be linked to the change of atmosphere, giant meteor that hit the earth and possibly hydrologic sorting of the different animals and fossils? Just another theory. However, what really hurts the theory is the breakdown of the first and second laws of thermodynamics. First law, matter or energy can neither be created nor destroyed. And the second, things deteriorate over time. Some say it depends on which system, open or closed, but regardless of the system, there is still a transfer to the matter or energy. Something is not able to be created out of nothing, yet the Big Bang process proposes that. Even so, the universe is a closed system, as anything known outside of the universe, by definition, is still part of it. I have concluded three things evolutionists should do to get everyone on board with their theory. Without using theorized so-called virtual life, protonoid proteins, and quote-unquote virtual particles, there are three things evolutionists must do to prove their hypothesis. One, break the first law of thermodynamics. Matter or energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Have matter or energy transformed, not from the stars, but be created out of nothing, as in the Big Bang. Two, create life from non-living material. Create life from a rock. And three, break the second law of thermodynamics. Things deteriorate and move towards disorder over time. If they can do the second one, create life from non-living material, show how the intelligently designed, coded life that they just created came from the natural world, have it occur in nature. So they have their hypothesis that we come from rocks and natural order produced us. Now just to actually produce the matter out of nothing, the life out of non-life, and the order out of chaos. Until then, it is a belief, a non-theistic religion. If an idea is not testable, repeatable, observable, and falsifiable, it should not be considered scientific or fact. Essentially, they were asked to once they proved that intelligence could make a library with books that has content to read, to then do a separate experiment. Take a paper mill and an ink factory and blow them up making it a library with good books make sure that the little engine that could is there they're not asked to make a universe as in making the stars and macrocosm just little bitty life a microbe like our professor said it's a bigger than scientist thing so if scientists can't do it how can the chaos of the natural world do it mind you that was a discussion post not a paper, but that stirred up a lot and it was great and I did it for the Lord and I did it for the unbeliever who has been lied to, told that they are insignificant, told that they come from nothing, told that they form from rocks and monkeys and they have no true significance, no. If you want to know more about creation and evolution, look up verses of, of the day, 190 to 193. So I was happy to be able to come and do this for the Lord my God, Yeshua HaMashiach, the absolute God, everyone's creator, but my Lord and Savior. Yeshua HaMashiach. So, here we go back to 1 Peter 4, 14. 
If you are insulted for the name of Christ, if you are flunked out of school for the name of Christ, if you have lost your job for the name of Christ, if you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. Dear Heavenly Father, I will take what the world calls an L for you, Father, because I know when I am with you it is always a win. Thank you for everything you do. And may my life have its purpose in you. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Goodbye.